Hello and welcome to a new adventure and we're back on the Queensbury line. Again, it's not called the Queensbury line, but I call it that. Uh, so we're making our way from the Queensbury station, which is right in the middle, the Queensbury junction, and heading on up to Keighley. And we're currently, we've already covered the Queensbury station site and we're now heading up towards the Thornton station, which is the next one on the line up here. And the beautiful viaduct that's coming up shortly. But while we're here on the track bed, Again, we've got Andy with us. And just down here is a bridge. But you wouldn't know if he was to stand on here. We didn't even realize we were on it until we saw the road down there. But this is pretty steep. Okay, so I've made my way down the embankment just to show you this bridge. So this is Brow Lane. And as you can see down here, it is a brow of a hill, literally. That is very steep down there. But you can see as well the bridge as it gets deeper as the road goes through it. But one of the most unique features of this bridge, which is why I had to come down and show you. Now, it isn't the only bridge that's like this, but there is another lane halfway through the bridge, which is very strange. And a retaining wall right in the middle there, look, as this private entrance to a, a house, I think, goes off that way, and then the lane straight down here. So obviously that house would have been here before, quite possibly and they had to allow for that when they built this bridge. So they built a, an access road from inside the bridge here, which is very, very unique. Now, can you imagine today the cost of something like this? And how much this would cost just for the walls alone and the groundwork and the size of all this stonework here? That would cost an absolute fortune. You're probably talking millions of pounds, all to carry a lane underneath a railway that's quite rural. That is it. So we've left the bridge, which was down there at the bottom of this hill. But as you can see, the, well, I'm gonna say the track bed. This isn't the track bed, it can't be. It slopes up, we're probably 50 feet above now, and it keeps going. It's a slope up there. So we're presuming this was a cutting at this angle coming through here, because there's also another track through there. So all this would have probably been a steep-sided cutting heading through, it must have been. And we're sloping back down now, as you can see. We've just come down, so it would have been a big giant cutting here, straight through. Again, today, all gone, doesn't exist any longer. So we've reached a section where there would have been a bridge across Cocking Lane. No comment. Filth! But it would have gone straight over here. Again, higher up, obviously. The lane's still here today, but no sign I was just gonna say, no sign of any abutments, and then I spotted that over there. A bit of a bridge edge by the looks of it. Yeah, definitely to do with the bridge, but that is all I can see around here. Yeah, all you immature children down there laughing at the name of this road. Grow up. <laughs> um, we're just heading down the track towards the viaduct, and first thing we see is a footbridge up here by the looks of it. It could be a farmer's track, but would you believe it? We've got steps up the side of it. We don't often get that. Let's have a look anyway. Again, this is intact. Steel girder bridge across it. The abutments look a bit worse for wear, but it's still standing. Some farmer's track of some sort. Not anymore. I doubt it would take any weight on this anymore. But yeah, it's nice to see it intact. So there we are looking back towards Queensbury, which would have been on the right over there. But you can see this is a great place to talk about how rural this line was and how much of an engineering feat that this line would have been. It wasn't known as the Alpine route for no reason. I mean, yes, it's not quite the Alps, but you will see further on how these hills are very regular and they get higher and higher and higher. And the line just continued straight through like nothing. So we've got coming up soon lots of viaducts and i mean big viaducts and also lots of tunnels and you'll see why when you see how many hills there are between here and keefley which is somewhere beyond there i mean you might be thinking at this point why didn't they just run a line through the valley from bradford and up here don't ask me but it was definitely easier to come around this way for some reason but very expensive no doubt as you're going to start to see across these next few videos a little makeshift farm on the track bed here. The peacock here. Let's check this out. I 
on this section here, we are on a very, very high embankment. I can probably say it's, I don't want to guess, but I'd say 150 to 200 feet down there, easy. And just here, another bridge. Again, I think this is just a farmer's track underneath. You can just see the wall here, the uh, top of the bridge. On this side, we've got the same on this side, just a farmer's access and uh, some kind of a building there. And would you Adam and Eve it, another bridge. But this time we've got a road crossing over. This is Headley Lane, crossing over the top of the tracks. So again, it's filled in slightly here. Not too much, but you can still see the cutting. A uh, big uh, sleeper down there. And we were obviously would have headed under the road here. Let's have a look at the other side, see what's remaining, but you can see the bridge wall on either side here. Yeah, that's still pretty much intact, apart from the middle section. It does drop away a bit on this side, so we're now looking at some railway sleepers here. They're everywhere on this track, and you can see, although it's uh, not very accessible, but you can see a cut-in on this side. And we've got another bridge straight ahead. Again, if I'm not mistaken, this was a farmer's track of some sort. And that was it basically, but this is pretty much intact. I mean, this is probably the best conditioned bridge we've seen today. And the cutting does widen here. I mean, look how high that is up there. This is just a cutting for, to go through this hillside here, but it's some really serious engineering works on these. And uh, you can see the track bed down there. It's, it's uh, a flowing stream today. You can actually see water flowing down. And uh, yeah, like I said, this bridge is in remarkable condition, which is weird because all the other ones up there are gone or damaged. This is tipped up, probably because it is literally in the middle of nowhere. But it used to be, like I said, a farmer's track from one side to the other, and that is it. I mean, how much would that bridge have cost just for an access road? <laughs> it's ridiculous, isn't it? So here we are. We've just made our way down the track bed, and we're at the Thornton Viaduct. Look at this, rather impressive, right across the valley here. No more than a little beck just down there in the valley. And then you've got Thornton Village on the far side and Thornton Station just over there, which we'll get to soon. But what I want to do, because you're not gonna see much from here. So I'm just gonna scope the weather out because it looks like it's about to rain. If not, I'm gonna get the drone out and get you some really good shots of this viaduct. Just have a quick look off the viaduct here. You can see it's not a very steep valley. Like I said, there is just a beck running through it. Let's have a look on the other side. Lovely golf course down there and a straight view into Bradford city centre all there. Right in the The heavens have just opened up, just as I brought the drone down. But I hope you enjoyed those drone shots of the viaduct. And we're now making our way onto the site of the uh, Thornton station and the goods shed as well. So here is the track bed, and it would have branched off this way and into the station, which was at the top side up there. And all this section here was sidings and a goods shed on the far corner over there, which I'll show you in a second. Here we are at Thornton Primary School and right in front of us here would have been a large goods shed. Quite a big building, but as you can see, long gone. Now a primary school 
We had a load of lines coming in here and the main line is at the back there running across towards the station which is the top end. We will head up there shortly. Before we do, you can definitely see that this is original railway wall in here all the way up the front of the site which we will check out in a minute. So this probably would have been uh, an access road down into the goods site here for loading in and things like that. So we're just sheltering from the rain but unfortunately we've just stumbled across a dead unicorn. Oh poor thing. <laughs> I think it's a unicorn and it, yeah it's got wings definitely a unicorn. So we've just ventured a bit further up Thornton Road and here is where we will start to see the actual station site which was just behind this wall here right there and you would have had the line coming in from this side here and then heading off back out again to head underneath Thornton Road a bit further up and into the first tunnel just up there of this alpine section here and as you can see here we've got a ramp access from Thornton Road down so this would have been where the carts or the trucks or whatever era that we're talking about would have brought their goods down here or passengers maybe who knows and then right here on the left is the main pedestrian entrance for the station as you can see it's quite well preserved today and we've got a nice information board over here telling you about Thornton station so there used to be a bridge a passenger or a pedestrian bridge should I say from here you can see where the wall is different it would have headed out that way across the platforms and we've stairs down to the platforms so let's have a, a look here so you can see the platforms would have been right here in front of us the station building was somewhere around here yeah so there used to be a bridge here but let's do a before and after picture i think it's taken from right here these have been that's what we're wondering could it be to do with the bridge across the track level maybe I don't know a stanchion of some sort or a support any comments down below what you think these were you probably know just show you a little picture of that pedestrian bridge there you can see it so we're stood up there on the wall looking that way so we're heading back towards the car now back in back towards Queensbury actually uh, away from this station but we're going to continue onwards with the line now for this next section I actually filmed that section two years ago with Paul and Rebecca Whitewick of the Whitewick's YouTube channel and I filmed all the tunnels we went in well most of the tunnels anyway on this route up here so in the next video you're gonna see us head into those tunnels with Paul and Rebecca Whitewick and I'm gonna do a voiceover because I didn't narrate it at the time and then we'll continue our journey Beyond that, from the Denholm station and Wilsden station, which are the next ones further up. So we're being joined by some friends at Thornton station here. But we're going to head back to the car and get out of this awful rain. But I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Aww.